This video is sponsored by Skillshare. What's going on guys, Alter Nastasio here with FlightPath.com. Now here I am with the DJI Mavic 3. This is a Cine version, and if you got the Cine version, you got an extra set or darker set of ND filters, ranging all the way from an ND4 to a 512. And today I'm gonna to be throwing on the ND512 on there in hopes of achieving some daytime long exposure photos. And for those that are familiar with my channel, you guys know I like to do a lot of photography. And the great thing about the Mavic 3 is that this thing is rock solid stable up in the air. And the reason why that's a big deal is because if you wanna do anything with long exposure photography, you basically need a camera that's sitting on a tripod. And this is probably as best as you're gonna get as far as stability wise, because if you're doing a long exposure photo, that shutter speed is gonna be open for about half a second to a second. And any movement of that drone in the air will definitely show some blur in the photo. And the great thing about the Mavic 3 is it does have that adjustable aperture from an F2.8 all the way up to an F11. So in this video, I just wanna walk you guys through my process of setting up the camera, setting up the settings in the app on the DJI Fly app. And I have the smart controller here but the settings would be the same thing if you're using the standard remote with the DJI Fly app. But before we jump into that process, a quick word from our sponsor, Skillshare. If you those aren't familiar with Skillshare, Skillshare is an online learning community that really focuses on the creative arts. So if you're like me and you like videography and photography, or you wanna to try to get into something new like user experience or illustration, Skillshare has thousands of classes to choose from. Now in this video, I am talking about aerial photography with drones, but the concept is very much the same when you're on land. I've been taking one of the classes from Phil Ebner who teaches long exposure photography made easy. I highly recommend checking out his course as he shows you some of the gear you might need for land long exposure photography and also walks you through a couple ways to edit your photos. The great thing about Skillshare is that everything is online so you are able to take it at your own pace. So if you're looking at leveling up one of your creative skills or want to learn something new make sure you check out those links down below in the video description. And a huge thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video the first 1,000 people to use my link down below we'll get a free trial month of Skillshare premium membership. And now back to the video. And if you guys are curious about audio, I'm actually using the new DJI. This is a new DJI wireless mic system. And I normally don't put my mic system like on my chest just like this, but just for the sake of the video, so you can actually see what I'm doing. I'll normally tuck it in, clip it on here, but just for the sake of the video so you can see it and hear it, this is the new DJI wireless mic system. So if you guys do like long exposure photos, Stick around, I'm gonna walk you through the process that I take in order to achieve that, and I'm gonna be using the Mavic 3. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is get this thing over the water. It's right over here, so let me put it over the water first, and then I'll walk you through how I adjust my settings in the app. So let's just get this thing dialed in first, and I'm gonna to try to get into this area right about here, just so you can see this uh, splashing here, and try to get all my exposure, everything before I start exploring, because once you dial it in once, then you're able to kind of explore the area. So. What I wanna do now is go from, switch it from auto, I'm gonna switch this over into photo mode. And now that I'm in photo mode, I'm gonna go in the very bottom, I'm in currently in auto, but I wanna go into manual. So I'll switch that to pro mode. Start from left to right, my storage is good. I do wanna make sure I'm shooting in JPEG and RAW. You always wanna have the RAW version for you to have the most data when you're doing some post-processing. So switch that over to RAW. White balance, because I'm shooting photos, I can actually just shoot an auto because I can always change that later. Now aperture, here's a big one as well as shutter speed. So shutter speed, I will normally try to target around the one second mark. So I'll start there first. Now let's swing this all the way down to about one second. Now as you can see here, one second, I am a little bit overexposed and ISO, I want this to be as high as quality as possible. So I want my ISO as low as possible. So I'll leave it at ISO 100. ISO is set to 100. Now it's the aperture. This is what's great about the Mavic 3 is that you do have that adjustable aperture. So what I'm gonna do now is move my aperture and stop it down until my exposure looks right. Now as you can see here, that looks pretty good. Let me go again, maybe an F8, probably an F8. I don't mind going a little bit on the darker side because of the fact I can at least bring that back. You don't want to overexpose because then once it's blown out, it's blown out. You're not going to get that data back. You can't recover those white. So this is now shooting at an F10, 1.3 second. That means my shutter speed, my shutter is actually opening up for a little bit over a second and then closing up. And while it's opening up, that's when it's capturing all of that movement.
There you go. Refocus it here on the water and wait for the water to rush in. Here it comes. So you have all the water rushing in, crashing up against the rocks. Refocus it down below. Let's see how this looks. Let me back it out a little bit. That way I can get that water rushing up against the rocks there. So let's see how this looks once, I, uh, once the water comes up again. And there it is guys, just wanted to walk you through some of the process I take when I do long exposure photography with drones. Like I mentioned, there's so many techniques to it and there's not, I would say, not one right way to do it. I'm just kind of walking you through the way I've been doing it. And like I mentioned earlier, if you don't want anything blurry as far as the stationary things, you're gonna to wanna to fly a little bit higher, especially if you're using a longer exposure, you're more prone to have that movement. And if you do have a little bit of movement up in the air, you're of course gonna see it on those areas that aren't supposed to be moving. And one way you can help that is actually just to fly a little bit higher up. If you're a little close to an object and you try long exposure photos and your drone moves a little bit, you'll definitely see a lot more motion in areas you don't want it to move. And that's all I got for today. Thanks to our sponsor, Skillshare. Make sure you guys check out those links down below in the video description. As always, if you guys got some value from this video, a big like would be much appreciated. Also, don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell to be notified when I post new videos. And of course, if you guys want a lot more Mavic 3 videos, make sure you guys check out the links above as well as down below in the video description. This is Aldrin Anastasio with flightpath.com. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.